We are back in the Boot Jack camping area, boondocking area, uh, right outside, well, about 20 minutes outside of West Yellowstone. We were here a couple weeks ago, showed you all around the field, the open field in Idaho. Um, we are right back in the same area. We were one spot down. We were that way last time. And this is a nice spot here. Big, nice fire pit. And we were only going to stay here for a day. Well, one night, really. But, you know, we like it here so much. I want to stream football. We know that we have good signal here. So why not just stay the whole weekend? And that's, that's really a large part of the freedom we like about this lifestyle. We can just choose to spend an extra day or two or three or whatever um, as our needs, I don't know, needs require whatever whatever we want really and that's that's really cool okay. and we've been really busy we've had family in town and trying to fit a lot of things in so faster than our normal pace and so it'd be nice to have a weekend where we aren't doing anything and just kind of chill get stuff done catch up on all the stuff we've put off for the last week so and we have swings yeah this is something we never considered <laughs> Oh, if that falls on film, I'm going to try not to laugh. Swings. Swings at a boondocking spot. Not bad. This, honestly, this is a first. <laughs> I have never seen makeshift. But look at this. I mean, somebody just strung up a piece of wood across two trees with some rope. That is, that is really cool. And her dog is already adventuring somewhere. Man, she loves it out here just as much as we do. But once again, it is smoky. The entire Mountain West is up in flames. Uh, Glacier National Park, just, I don't know, 100 miles north and west, I think, of where we are here. There's just fires all over the place. There's a couple in Oregon. One of them was started, I heard, from a kid shooting off fireworks. Lots in Idaho. Ugh. Yeah, lot, uh, lots in Idaho, too fires all over the place. You can't smell the smoke, which is good, but you can definitely see it in the air. This is one thing that we didn't see last time. Apparently this is a open range. We did see lots of cow pies around. So we knew they were around. We thought they had already made their migration. Apparently they didn't. We're joined for happy hour by some cows. They're all looking this way. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. I think we may have taken their spot. I think this was their party spot and we took it and they're kind of pissed at us. Cheers. Humans won, cows nothing. High five. <laughs> I think they gave up on us. They were like, whatever, they're not sharing. We did a Tuesday talk a couple weeks ago about our tires, which ones we chose and uh, what the brand is and what all those numbers in the tire size mean. And we got a comment, uh, do we fill our Airstream tires up to the maximum cold PSI, which is 80. The answer is no, we do not. Um, though we could, and cold means, you know, first thing in the morning, what is the, what is the PSI? What's your tire pressure before you start putting or driving with them, basically. Um, we do not fill them all the way up to 80 PSI cold. Though you could, we don't. We fill them to about 65 PSI. Um, the reason for that is the softer tire is going to create a little bit of a of a better and easier ride. When they're full up all the way, the ride's going to be really bumpy on the inside of the airstream and things are going to rattle around and, and there's more risk of something breaking because it's just going to be a rougher ride. So while we could fill them up to 80 PSI cold, we certainly do not do that. In fact, I've never done that with any of my, uh, my tires. I like to keep well below the upper threshold unless there's some specific reason to do so and we just don't have them so or we just don't have one of those reasons 
So we keep it at about 65 PSI cold. After a trip, we're at about 73, 74, 75 PSI, depending on the temperature and how fast we're going. I gotta say, we've been hurting for video ideas lately, or at least this weekend, because we're just in this field so I could stream some football. The stream's been very iffy, by the way, more on that later. But I did get a comment asking about our truck. Somebody has a 25-foot trailer, and they were wondering if upgrading to a Dodge Ram 3500, they do currently have a 2500, um, so they were wondering if upgrading to a 3500 would be totally overkill or not. We have a 2500 Dodge Ram 2500 HD that pulls our 30-foot Airstream. That's about 10,000 pounds. This thing pulls it effortlessly. The highest grade that we've gone up is 8%, um, and it was it was just fine. We were able to accelerate up an 8% grade um, in fifth gear with this truck. And one of the things I like about this particular truck is it's built for towing. The previous owner towed a fifth wheel, so they took off the fifth wheel hitch in the back, but the brake controller was already here. The exhaust brake is already there and ready to go. Uh, the exhaust brake is just a way of the engine effectively running at less efficiency to slow itself down during you know deep declines like six seven eight percent grades you just kick on that exhaust brake and this thing slows you down really nicely even with the airstream behind you without you even touching the brake it is super useful and it saves your brakes big time this is a four-wheel drive I would never consider never consider the way we camp RVing with a truck or any unit, really. It, even if we eventually switched out to a Class B, I would not do that unless it was a four-wheel drive. This thing has already saved us a, num a number of times by switching it into four-wheel drive because we just get stuck or the sand was a little bit deeper than we thought. You know, things happen. Yeah, no trouble at all with this truck. In my opinion, based on what this commenter had said in their comment, 25 foot Airstream, currently have a Dodge Ram 2500 HD 2007. This guy's a 2008, by the way. I, I personally see no reason to upgrade to a 3500 truck. This thing can tow about 18,000 pounds, I believe. I think the 2007 is similar. But the more important thing to keep in mind is the payload, how much weight can actually come down on the truck to include the trailer itself, on the back with the hitch, all, the, all your equipment in the bed, and the people riding in the truck. That will be your more important um, stat, I guess, to, uh, to keep in mind as you're deciding what truck you need. But for us, this thing works great. It's moving day, and whenever it's moving day, I feel like I'm in that movie Escape from Alcatraz with Clint Eastwood, and that scene where the, the jail guard goes, wake up, Morris, it's moving day. Anyway, it's moving day. We've been in the same field we were a couple weeks ago for just the weekend to stream some football. And speaking of streaming, I said that I was going to have more on that later. Streaming has been very spotty through the networks themselves. Like college football on Saturday was pretty much a no-go. The stream would work for two, three, four minutes maybe, then it would just freeze all the time. Very frustrating. Finally gave up early afternoon. But yesterday, and we had like three or four bars, there's noise in there, we, we had like three or four bars of boosted Verizon 4G, by the way, and it still wouldn't stream well. Yesterday though, NFL Red Zone, which is highly, highly worth it, by the way, if you like the NFL, that streamed fine the entire day. So, two things, one, you do need good network connectivity wherever you happen to be to to stream but two the service that you're streaming from has to know what they're doing and apparently nfl red zone does and i've been having at least i have been having some issues with some of the other streams through like abc and cbs i was hardly able to stream the nfl football game on thursday with nbc um, but then again last night uh, sunday night football on M nbc seemed to stream okay so it just kind of depends on the day and i'm just kind of hoping for the best at this point with streaming live sports youtube works great uh, netflix works great but it's just really the live stuff that you may have some issues with. We are siphoning off the last bit 
of our water. Then we're gonna hit a super Walmart on the way to our next spot north of Yellowstone. We're definitely gonna go into Yellowstone um, when we uh, park to the north because that's supposed to be where, where all the wildlife is. Uh, so we're gonna go check it out. But yeah, we're gonna hit a super Walmart on the way up to get some more water and we will be good to go. We are all hitched up and ready to go. We'll see you in North Yellowstone. Let's go, Penny. Up to Bozeman.